Okay, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter Neal. I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, and anything weird and wonderful. I think I can flip for a profit. Uh, if you haven't checked out my stock or my website, there you go, antiquesarena.com. Um, everything on there is handpicked by myself, and I love everything that's actually on there. Um, got quite a bit going on today. I've got some beautiful stock that I've picked up at this car boot sale or flea market, if you like, um, this week in Gethany Gay. I'm going to share that with you. I want to have a chat um, about up and coming uh, videos and existing videos. Um, I want to introduce, uh, introduce, I want to say hello to somebody. Um, there's good points and bad points at going to a car boot sale. Now, the good points are lots of people recognize me and they take the time to come over and say hello and have a chat which is absolutely lovely and today i've got to say hello to a lovely lady and there she is so embarrassed moment i promised her that i'd um put a photograph in she was a bit disappointed that i couldn't she couldn't be on film because um Tilburth allow me to film, but Gethley Gay don't allow me to film at the moment. But I am going to have a chat with them, see what they think. Um, her name is Mickey M E, ah, sorry M I K K I. Um, <laughs> what can I say? You know, I'm not very good with names. So Mickey, hello. Thank you very much for saying hello, and thank you for supporting the channel. Very much appreciate it. They were up in Gethley Gay selling Sunday. So, yeah, as I was saying, there's good points and bad points to being recognized on YouTube. Um, another good point is if you watch the live footage, but I'm not sure if it's actually gone out yet or not. It may go out before or after this film. But I'm actually approached at the car boot sale with somebody who's just picked up some silver cheap from another stall. And they come straight across to me and sell it straight to me because they know me and know I buy. So there's upsides of um, being recognized and being known that what i buy there's a downside now did you watch the film i put out this week where i was lucky enough to find a world war one um death penny now a death penny is a posthumous award or a posthumous medal in bronze um dedicated for people who fell during the first world war and i found that at car boot sale now some people argue they're not rare, but let's be totally honest with you. Yes, millions of them were done for the First World War, but there are very few that actually find their way out onto the market. They're either kept by the families, uh, already in private collections, already in museums, or in dealers' hands. So there's very few of them that actually come out onto the market like this one did. And I bought it for £12. I don't know if you've seen the video for that one yet. It's, it's published. And you actually get, because I'm wearing the head camera, you actually get to see me find a live and buy it. Now, I'm drifting a bit off the subject of the bad point of the YouTube. And basically, why I'm using this example, the gentleman in question actually heckled me or trolled me, if you like, while I was walking around the car boot sale. He was driving into the car boot sale and I was walking around minding my own business. Next thing I you know, I hear someone shouting, Oi! So I turned around like that and he says, what are you looking for today laughing at me and so i just casually said you know, jewelry coins bronze you know things like that and he just laughed and drove off so i left it to it 10 minutes later i got to his store and he's got all he haven't unpacked he's just got boxes out and he's there come on have a rummage have a rummage so i open the box like that and he's there he comes up to me he goes come on have a scrounge and see what you can find so anyway i'm rummaging through i'm opening bubble wrap and things like that and i pick it up and i pull up the bronze death pack so I ask him a price. First of all, he's, I don't know, I'll have to have a look in the book. Then he takes it off me and put it in the car. And then he turns around to me and says, well, do you know, I'm not sure of the price. I'll have to come back in an hour or two and I'll have a look. An hour or two. Really? I said to him, I said, not be funny, mate. I'm not going to be here in an hour or two. I'm just walking on by and I'm not selling. Give me a price. I'll either say yes or say no. Anyway, with some reluctance, he actually gave me a price of £12, in which case I said, yes, thank you very much and ripped his arm off um realizing he'd made a mistake there um he then 
refused to uh, give me a price on a solid silver or sterling silver ladle, big ladle, sterling silver one I found in the box. Because after I had the death penny, I went back to the box to dig through, see what else was in there. And I pull out all the cutlery and I look as well. And I got a silver ladle in my hand. He refused to give me a price. So, you know, in one hand, he's shouting, you know, to the general public, you know, everything's cheap. Come and have a scrounge. Come have a rummage. Rip me apart. Come on. Um, the minute I pull it out, he was reluctant to sell me the death penny. Once he'd sold me the death penny, he didn't want to sell me the silver ladle. So that's the down one of the downsides of being um, obviously recognized on YouTube. Another one is obviously the trolls and you get a nastiness. But that's nearly the end of the day. We just try to ignore things like that. So that's my shout out to uh, Mickey Dunn. Get my phone on there. Just double check the name. Just two seconds. Mickey, M-I-K-K-I. So that's my shout out to you. And I hope you had a wonderful day on Sunday because I didn't do very well Sunday. It was very quiet. But I did have these few pieces. I'm going to share intimately, have a chat and share some with you. This is the first piece I purchased up there. Now you've seen me buy a lot of these miners lamps. This is a miner safety lamp. And they would take it underground and it would prevent explosions. Now this one is Welsh. It's produced by E. Thomas and Williams uh, in Aberdeen, which is just up the road. And this one is actually inscribed. Now, I don't know whether the lady realized it was all inscribed when she sold it to me, but it reads, presented to A. Hewitt on your retirement, 1977. That's a good year. That was the year I was born. So it's a vintage year. <laughs> From Cum Lodge, which isn't far from here, uh, NUM, National Union of Mine Workers. So this has got an NUM uh, association. It's dated 1977, so already it's 45 year old. Um, and there are people who obviously collect mine's lamps, but anytime you have an NUM or any way of dating it, things like that, then it adds value. Now, I can tell you now, I paid the full asking price for this, which was £20, so about $28. And I've actually, I see this as, because of the NUM association at £85, £95, no problem at all. Um, I've sold associated ones in the past, and that's the sort of figures I've achieved. So people can always make me offers, you know, if um, they feel like it. So that's the asking price. We'll see what we achieve. Now, I buy a lot of people who know me and people I'm sort of friendly with at the car boot sales and things. And there's um, a lovely couple I'm friendly with. They watch the channel, so I'll say hello to you both now. You know who you are, Sharon and Rob. Anyway, um, they buy quite regular. And sometimes they move it on to me. Now, they purchased this. They bought this uh, on a Wednesday morning and they thought it was sterling silver and they paid 18 pound for it it was about 26 25 26 dollars however it turned out it's silver plate now it's got a full stamp up there of de and just below it no it's not it's there it's got a full stamp h h i think it is a 90. well that i did say on the day i do some research but i thought 90 was silver plate and it turns out it is silver plate it's um silver plate um t card e from the netherlands or so dutch silver plate t card e with embossed scenes and it has this de at the top here is a quality mark by dowie egberts and the hh mark is herbert hoijkas and i done the research on that if I share with you this now, you can actually read it for yourself because my reading is terrible, obviously, because of you know, struggle to read and write tidy. Um, so there you have it. Now, I purchased this off them. They wanted, because it was silver plate, they uh, they tried it at a couple of markets and didn't get nowhere. I bought it off them for £20, which just basically by defeat, they can buy someone else. And I'm going to try it on the website. And I've done the research. I have found one. I sent them the link to one I found sold on Catawiki for 42. 
Um, and then that's obviously how they be done the deal. Because what I done, I done the research for them first of all, and sent them the link and said it's not silver, it's silver plate. If you go to this link, you'll find the identical one. But beautiful, typical Dutch scene. And it's quite unusual to have it in such good, clean condition with no silver way at all. But it is a silver plate example or a silver example. But that cost me £20, so $28. But they bought that in the morning and sold it to me, I think it was two weeks later, and just wiped their feet. They actually bought a silver jug that was in a video a few back um, with it, and I bought the silver off them straight away. Um, I think I paid them £70 for the silver. But either way, so yeah, some nice things. It's more to come, lots more stock to come. Can I just, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like the channel, please uh, subscribe, don't feel you have to. Um, and if you, you do enjoy the videos, I would very much appreciate a like and a share. It just helps the YouTube algorithm pick me up and push the videos out. Again, you don't have to, but it helps me. And if you enjoy the channel, I would appreciate it. Moving on, another bit of stock. We have this, which is, I absolutely love it. It came in with a minus lamp, so I knew it was gonna be good. So we have a porcelain plate or bung china plate. I can't pronounce that. Crygo, Pottery, Cardiff, Wales, number 267. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. Um, I know I'm Welsh, but I struggle with the reading of names and things. Anyway, across the top here, South Wales Miners Relief Fund. Down the bottom, Miners Strikes, or Strike 1984-85. Now was one of the big strikes with Margaret Thatcher and that, and there was a lot of poverty during the strike, in, especially in Wales. And across the top here, which is quite unusual, in appreciation of women's support, or women's support, from middle of the coal field then you have it's all handwritten then you have this is hand painted in the center that is a winding wheel and a winding wheel basically is a big tower with a massive wheel and it have a big cable coming down and it would pull the carts up out of the mine full of coal that's a winding wheel and underneath it in gold if you can see it's almost like gold mirror finish is the letters n u m you don't realize it but that's actually n then the u and then the m so really nicely done, painted uh, and painted again around the outside for the border, and it's in lovely condition. It's just a really unusual plate. I've never seen one of these before, and the fact it was produced in Wales and it's such a local thing again. Um, the miners' strike in Wales was really really bad. It was a bad time for a lot of people. My my parents lived through it. My father was a coal miner, so you yeah. know. I love that. That costs two pound. I've actually put that up for forty-five pound, and you know I actually think that'll sell comfortably, no problem at all for that money. It's hand painted. It's bung china. It's Welsh, and it's the Miners Strike NUM. So you find me another one. So if they want it, they'll have to pay for it. Um, so we'll have a little chat. I've got loads more to share with you, and I want to have a chat about the videos. Now I have promised you a video on. I don't know if I've got dyslexia or not, but a few people who apparently are in the medical profession have watched my videos and they see how much I struggle with the reading and writing and things like that. And they suggested to me maybe dyslexia. Now, when I looked into it, um, loads of the signs for dyslexia I've actually got. So I've been in the middle of writing an article, which as you can imagine, I'm struggling with, but it's a big article because I want to put an article onto the website on my blog post on the website. And then I'm going to bullet point it um, I'm going to make a little video on YouTube talking about my story and how I've had to cope with um, struggles of reading and things like that. And it's quite a bit art, big article because it goes all the way back to how I started struggling in school and how I was behavior issues because of it and things like that. So it's quite a big article. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to actually come live on the um, StreamYard and play the video whilst I'm in the chat room with you, and then I'll chat to you about your comments on the video I'm playing. Then we'll minimize the video down or close the video down, and I'll stay on the screen and I'll answer questions and just have a general chat with it. But it's taken a while because it's, I want the article done right. 
to go on the blog post and then off that article it's going to be the bullet points for the film so you then can either watch the film and join in and chat and have your say and give your comments or you can just read the article um but it's it's just where how i identify things um, because how i've learned things you know how i learned the antiques business even though i find it very difficult to read a book some people can read a book in a day or two days takes me a month maybe two months and then i have to read it two or three four times because they don't say again things like that um so all that's going to be in there so that'll be coming out probably going to be still another few weeks maybe a month or so away because i still got to finish that article I'm also going to do um, videos now. Now I'm I'm loving the head camera and I'm having good response with the head camera. I can only film through the summer with the head camera in Tiraberth because it's a fee on the field. So once the wet weather comes, I can't film within the more. But I'm hoping to be able to go around charity shops and antique shops and things like that filming. So for example, I can go down the pump house in Cardiff, walk around. Put, I'll put the head camera on, walk around the pump house, find all the stuff, take the head camera off, go pay for it, and then talk to you about it all later on. Or I may even talk to you about it as I'm finding it. Um, so I'll do them type of films through the winter time when I can't buy at the car boot sales. And I'll do charity shops and things like that. So it'll, it's it's all good. It'll um, We'll still manage to keep some live footage going. Um, and I, I may have a chat with Gethly Gay Car Boot Sales, see if Barbara will let me film if she sees a few examples of the ones I've done where I blur everyone out, she may allow me to film. I don't know yet, but I'll see. I may ask for permission again. Um, yeah, I'll show you another one or two more items, and then uh, we'll have a bit more of a chat. Now, I bought two paperweights on the weekend. First, though, one is this, which I think is... is Fully signed up, fully numbered, everything on the base. It's uh, Caithness Crystal or Caithness Glass Scotland. Um, I haven't got my eyeglass here. Yes, I have. Let's see, I haven't got an eyeglass. It's in front of me. Bear with me just a second. It looks to be Caithness uh, Glass Scotland Moonflower, I think it is, and, and it's G59069. But it's a beautiful thing. I'm hoping you can actually see that spiral in the centre. It's a mixture of pink and you know, opaque glass. It's absolutely stunning. Um, it's not Fortunes. It's fully signed up on the base, you can see there. Now, the, this one cost me a whole two pounds, so about $3.00. It's like 15, maybe 20 pounds at a push. But about 15 pounds, you can hear the dog going crazy. The postman must be at the door. It's like a 15 pound paperweight, maybe 20 pounds if I'm lucky. Um, but for two pounds, it's nothing wrong with that. I also had this one, which I believe is a Murano Millifiori. It's a small version. Now it had a label on the back. Now, just because something's got a label, it, assuming you can read the label, doesn't mean it's genuine anyway. There are sites you can use that help you identify genuine labels. Now, I already felt this may have been Murano. It could be a Chinese copy, but I, I felt it could have been a Murano one. And looking at that label, it actually rung a bell as to what label it could be. So then I come over here. Now, if you come to 20thCenturyGlass.com, into the encyclopedia, and then into the label section, they actually show you all the genuine labels that are found on glass. Now, this is the label here that I believe was originally on the uh, paperweight. That one there, Murano label. But you can literally come here and you can jump, you know, Italian, Scandinavian, British, come to British here. You have John Deakins, Liz Card, Whitefriars, you know, Wedgwood. It just shows you the labels. So it'll also help you if you've got something in um, the Kingsland there. Um, if you can only see part of the label and you can't read it or, you know, you've only got a picture, then you can come here and just scroll through the labels and help you identify what you've got. Um, there is also on Facebook, there's a Facebook group 
um, Murano Glass on Facebook, and they've got a section on the fake labels, real labels. I'm assuming it's a Murano one because of that re remains of a label. But again, it could be a Chinese one, but it is quite nicely done. And normally you tell them um, by the big canes for the Chinese, smaller meter canes for the Italian and that, but it's got bubbles now running through as well. So it may be a Chinese copy, but a bit more research needed. But that was the label I thought. But that's a good little tip. If, you, um, if you've got glass, you've got a part of a label, go on there and just scour the labels and see where you can come to. If you've got an idea of the country, that's great. If you haven't, then it's just a time thing of just going through them all. But it's not going to be fortunes, even if it was a Murano, it's like, again, another £10, £15. Pound. But two little, nice little paperweights there, £3 in total, four and a half dollars something like that, $4, which is absolutely fine. Now, I want to mention um, the website um, before I show you some more. Now, I started the website during the uh, lockdown phase, as you're aware. Um, it's taken me a long time to build up now. I list on average on the website 50 to 60 items a week, every week, um, new stock going on the website. I try to do blogs, but I'm, um, I'm with the summertime here or the spring and all the car boots are going strong. I'm finding it hard for time for the blogs, but I am in the middle of writing the blog about the dyslexia. Um, but I have over 2,000 items, 2,040 items in my shop. And they are all top quality items, really good, beautiful items. So I'm not interested whether you want to buy them or not. If you just want to go and have a browse and see what type of stuff you can buy when you're at the car boot sale. The idea right, of me making the car boot sale films, showing you what I buy and what I pay for and what I hope to sell it for. It's just to give you an idea of what you can look for when you're out there at the car boot sales, or flea markets or swap meets, wherever, and give you an idea of what's actually selling. Now, I know what I can sell you doesn't mean you can sell it, but we all have the same worldwide market. So technically, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, whether we're in London or in Wales, you know, in the sticks. We would all sell into the same market online. So technically, if I can sell it, you can sell it. Um, so, yeah, 2,000 items, go and have a dig through. If you want to know any of my history, there's an About Me page. The website is hard, a lot of work done on it. I am very, very proud of the website. There's a lot on there. Um, go and take a look. It's Honestly, you won't be disappointed, um, even if it's just a browse through curiosity. Um, it's really, really nice. Next piece, coming get the gear. And I walks up to a store full of brass and things so it gives you a hint and the gentleman says I, I picked up this piece and he said you'll never see another one of them and do you know what he was right I found another one up for sale uh, currently um, but not as good as mine it's not in the condition mine's in so what do we have here we have an absolute stunning large pierced brass ink stand now, the one I found online is described as Victorian. Um, I would have personally put it down as possibly early 20th century, but I'm not going to argue. Uh, it could be Victorian, could be early 20th century. Beautiful. Love these pillars here for the legs. There are masks everywhere. By masks, I mean the face on all four sides. It's got a PS design. It's got scroll work everywhere. It's absolutely stunning. Now, you said I want a tenner for it. Couldn't give him the tenor quick enough to be honest with you. Absolutely stunning thing. Now, the one I found online has no liner um, and has quite a bit of corrosion on the brass. But other than that, it's exactly pretty much identical thick cast brass. Um, and they're asking 140. So I actually put this up for 125 and undercut them, even though mine is in better condition. So I'm cheaper than them with a better example. Uh, but it only cost me a tenner, which is about $14. So, you know, I'm going to be around 10 to 1, 11 to 1, something like that on my return. Beautiful thing. Really, really nice quality brass ink well. And I can see that sitting on a, you know, a real high-end uh, office desk. Um, something important with a just 
decorative, lovely ink well, a couple of pens down near around your beautiful thing. Tenor. That really was a cracking little find. Let me see if I can show you the one that um and the one that was up for sale. Bear with me, images. Quick little quick look, see if I can find it. If I can't, I'm not really worried. Just gonna share with you, see if I could find it. I normally do keep pages like this open. Did I see it? Just to show there's not many of them out there because um I got it saved it so we scroll down off the name right this was the one i found which was an antique victorian polished brass inkwell um so identical to mine with legs everything's identical and you come up here and they have no liner in theirs and there was a few other issues as well, if I remember. But £140 they're asking. So I thought to myself, well, mine's complete in beautiful condition, so I'm going to cut them. But that was a tenner on a boot sale, $14. That's the type of stuff you can find at these little car boot sales around here. You know, that, £10, uh, $14. Death plaque, £12, $16 for death plaque. You know, things like that. It's absolutely, absolutely stunning. Um also bought these costume jewelry, they're not gold unfortunately. But I got a pair of cameo earrings. Now on the top, if you look there, it's like a fleur de lis at the top of the thing, then they come down with the cameo droppers. But what I like about them is they actually just clip on earrings. So they just clip on and we're gonna be a model now you know <laughs> it's just a nice pair of earrings costume jewelry but really nice vintage cameo earrings clip on uh, they owe me 75 pence for the pair so about a dollar now i had a look i found people selling them 40 50 pound a pair so i've just put them on 20 pound 20 pounds so about 20 dollars i put them on for um i hope that's more than enough but um yeah really really uh cute quirky little things the the lady had loads of clip-on earrings 75 pence a pair and i thought i know clip-on earrings are collectible and desirable i went for the cameo ones and just left her at that because i don't want to begin too in depth into the costume jewelry i bought them because they were the cameo and i like them Um, let me see, I think that may be about it, to be honest with you. Um, I've said a law. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. It's the second time I've had to make this film, because the first time StreamYard was playing up, or YouTube was playing up, and the face was blurry as hell. Uh, the picture was atrocious, so I couldn't use it. I've had to refilm it, so yeah hopefully it's worked this time around um again i'll ask don't forget please uh, i would appreciate just a like and a share it doesn't cost nothing um and it does help thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed and i will see you soon bye for now